of the conference today, you, the public, has the power to handle the conversation in this segment. So now, live, I'm welcoming four co-founders that have been part of the Startup Visa program. They are in different sectors, health tech, fintech, and fashion tech. So now we are going to welcome, we have a, a, a really interesting uh, panel, and of course you can ask your questions, so feel free to add them on the stage. So we're gonna, we're, we're gonna um, welcome Victor Salinas, is the CEO of IonTech. We're also gonna welcome Lipsio Carvalho, CEO of Bitnick and Sons, Raquel, Rachel Boschat or Raquel Boschat of Atimos. So now we're gonna give them a welcome over here and see if we can connect with them. I see Lipsio and I see Victor. How are you doing, guys? Good morning, Guillermo. Good morning, everyone. That's amazing. I'm 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 glad that you can join us for for this event. A little bit different, I guess, from from the face to face event in the, in. So um, tell me how how has this been like this uh, 2020 for you guys? You want to start, Victor? Go ahead. Yeah, sure, sure. Well, in our case, uh, you know, at, at the beginning of this pandemic, it was kind of difficult. We have to uh, understand how the the market is moving uh, because we are in the fintech space. I think during the whole crisis, we've been um, having more traction with customers because right now people are trying to automate uh, more and more systems in the backend process. So fortunately for all, we've been uh, one of these uh, uh, industries where we've been like uh, accelerated uh, during this crisis. So right now it's, 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 it's getting better. We're still working in our marketing and sales strategy to, to grow our market here in Canada, but we are, we are uh, working so very well so far. Well, on my end, guys, uh, it's been a very challenging year. Uh, coming from a, a company that uh, sells backpacks and handbags, and most of the people are using those backpacks to travel or to go to work. And during most of these times, uh, we're not traveling, uh, neither going to work, working from home. Uh, uh, we Our sales uh, uh, suffered a lot, especially in, in the months of May, June, and July. But in Brazil and here, especially in Canada, we are seeing now sales starting to get back to normal levels so we can uh, uh, start over again and investing and, and growing the company. So it's a very challenging year uh, where we really learn how to manage resources in order to thrive uh, uh, through difficult times. It's a pleasure to be here too. Thank you so much for the invitation. For us at Atimos, we had a, a great success in Brazil during this year. We are doing three new implementations in hospitals in Brazil. Here in Canada, we know that's a long-term period to sail because we are achieving new goals, building our reputation. So uh, that's a step by step. Thank you very much. Well, and I want to give the welcome also to Raquel. Raquel, very welcome as well to um, have you. And of course, I've been I've been following your your progress through, you know, like 2019 when when everything started. You and Diego. Um, I just wanted to uh, let you know, like, or at least ask you, how did you start with with the with the program, and what do you think are or have been the biggest challenges so far with different markets. We know that Latin America is a one way to conduct businesses, create companies, and then North America in Canada is, 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 is a totally different one and culture matters. So if you can please tell us a little bit about it. Yes, thank you. Um, I've been working with reputation and building strategic communication along all my life. I've been working with that for more than 20 years. So what I can say to you is that when you change uh, your business to another country, you have to rebuild your reputation. You have to, to gain trust 
from other clients, partners, companies. Um, so what we see is that, of course, we have our story in Brazil. The company has more than 10 years there. Uh, and this, uh, we achieve goals here, sh showing our results and our clients there. But at the same time, we have to make the right connections, establish confidence, uh, show that we are serious here, that we came to make the things right. So it's a step by step that um, I've been working also to um, show that we are real entrepreneurs, that we are uh, that we really want to achieve goals to make a difference here in the Canadian market. Thank you, uh, Raquel. And remember that you in the house or wherever you are connected, you can also participate in this conversation. I know that there's a lot of people from different parts of Latin America, from the different parts of the world, really. And if you are interested and curious to know what are the challenges to get into a different market, but with the support of many programs like this one, please feel free. We have a very uh, big dedicated team to get your questions and then we're gonna pass them. But now Victor, Victor as well is another um, individual who I admire a lot because of the many, many, many talents and challenges that you've been uh, able to overcome uh, being in Canada and having your other part of the company in Mexico. So tell us, what do you think has been the challenge that you could not predict, that you could not prepare? Because there's a, a lot of planning in coming into a different culture, but there's something always that is going to go wrong and how did you um overcame that it seems right now that i don't have audio for victor so let me yeah. just confirm oh go. we got it now yeah <laughs> sorry i was a mute yeah how are thank you, you Guillermo. So yeah, I was telling you that um, during the last uh, three years when we started this journey, I remember the first time that I went to a meeting, an event, and I was too shy to talk. It was really hard for me to explain where we, what, what is our company, what is our idea behind the scenes. So I think uh, during the whole trip, we've been like uh, facing many changes, many, many challenges, many many uh, things that we we're, we're, we're expected to have it. For, of, of course, the, the language is one of the most important things because if you don't know how to express your uh your idea even that if you have a lot of experience in your field in your country when you come to canada and you want to show what you have as, as a raquel mentioned uh you need to find the best way to do it right so this is why i think one of the most uh important things and one of the things that i have to learn during that process so i had many many meetings that i didn't really explain myself very well so yeah something is is happening and uh, the other thing is uh, when you when you want to grow your company here uh, especially when you are the CEO of the company you have to think not just of the company but also on your family right because it's, it's, it's the whole the whole package so if you're gonna bring your family here you're gonna you have to think that it, it's gonna be challenging for all of us so it's gonna be a new culture a new way of living and also it's a new way to have a relationship with your partners, with your friends, with your family. So it's it's uh, uh, in, in the personal in the personal way. There's a lot of many uh, uh, things that you have to um, uh, learn during this process. But you know, as a CEO and as an owner of a company, every every uh, always is a roller coaster, right? So it's, there's up and downs. So I think, in in, in my personal opinion. I have more than one challenge. I'm still working on it. I'm still working in the, in the, in the as I mentioned, in the marketing and sales strategy. We're still uh, understanding how is the ecosystem moving in, in, in Canada. But I think right now it is the best place to stay for us. I'm glad to hear it's the best place to be. And as uh, part of the uh, uh, conferences and the videos that we watch earlier and the messages from 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 of the government like canada right now it's having a, a a very very attractive moment so speaking of attractive fashion has been one of those 
industries that have definitely been super difficult to guess what's going to happen next. And Lipsio as part of that industry with those high ends, very nice backpacks that you offer, um, I'm very curious uh, not only for traveling, but I know that there's gonna there's happening a lot of domestic traveling now sure. with 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 this situation. We know that some uh, industries and businesses have not stopped, whether you're doing it remotely, domestically, or internationally. So wanted to know a little bit of like from that industry the fashion ones and what have been the biggest challenges and if you have seen those challenges from different parts north america and latin america or are the same that's that's a great question guillermo uh actually uh we've been we are facing different challenges in in both markets and the north american market uh, as well as in the south american market while the South American market uh, uh, is struggling, still struggling with COVID and sales kind of plummeting right there, here the challenges are a little bit different. Uh, in North America, the audience is completely different and the behavior is completely different as well. So every time you, you think about inter internationalizing your company, you always come from a point where you almost understand and kind of know what you're up to or what you're up against. Uh, but by the time you get here, you start to face very different challenges. Uh, just to mention one, we have to pivot one of, one of our biggest strategies for 2020 because we are getting ready to start uh, uh, selling in brick and mortar stores. We are a digital native company, so we've been selling online since day one. And for the first time in our history, we are rehearsing this attack to, to brick and mortar stores. And right at that moment that we are hitting those stores, the COVID-19 crisis came. And most of those retail stores for fashion, they either shut down temporarily or shut down for good. So we had to change the strategy again and switch our focus back to direct to customer and to a digital operation 100% online. So being able to adapt and to react in a very fast way I think it's key in order to succeed your business uh, when you're thinking about inter internationalizing. Thank you very much, Lipsio. And now, uh, Raquel, you also mentioned about uh, the communication strategies, and I know that language is a big um, differentiator. Mm -hmm. Whether it's Portuguese, Spanish, or English, we're talking of three different ways to communicate. So, because I'm seeing on the stage a couple of questions, um, we have a shout out as well from uh, Buenos Aires, Argentina. Uh, especially, specifically, they're asking about marketing strategies and marketing, same like, for example, laws and, and anything that has uh, to do with regulations. Marketing is very unique to the market that you are actually targeting. So can you tell us a little bit of the, what was, what is that transition and how is that in 2020 happening now? Yes, good question. Uh, of course, countries are completely different when you are talking about rules and regulations. And that is really important to make a good preparation because, before you come to another country to adapt and uh, reorganize all the steps for the marketing strategy. Uh, I can give some examples. Uh, uh, when you talk, for example, in Brazil, we use a lot uh, WhatsApp. Uh, we make uh, uh, calls for everybody and, and the strategy for communication skills, not only the language, but the way you communicate is different from here. In Canada, uh, you send emails and it's okay to send another one to follow up and ask for a, a quick chat 15 minutes call um, and we don't usually use whatsapp here uh, linkedin is also a tool that works very well in canada and it, it is also used in brazil but as not as much as here so we also have to understand the market um, and how we can communicate better another thing that is really important is communication etiquette 
how you have to communicate with different cultures. You must understand how to react, how to make empathy with the other person. Um, and this is also different from a country to another one. So when you are talking about uh, communication skills and strategy, it's not only related to roles, because that is essential. You must really know the difference between one and another, but also you have to to, to understand better the culture to communicate better. Thank you very much. I think that communication is uh, absolutely one of the things that you are constantly learning. Myself as a native from El Salvador and now doing business in, in, in Canada, I'm, I'm learning every day, not only because um, doing business in, in, in different regions, but there's always something new. There's some new strategy. We know that with technology, everything is changing. So it's very important. So this question will go for Victor. And Nestor Miranda is asking on the stage, how long has it taken you to adapt your business to the Canadian market? Have you pivoted a lot? <laughs> This is a really uh, interesting question. Um, well, in our uh, particular case, uh, I think we spend more than we than, than we thought, right? So uh, I started this process three years three years ago, and to be honest, and, and, and Raquel mentioned before, uh, the way that we did business in Latin America, it's it's totally different that you the way that you have to do business here, right? So in, in Latin America. There's a lot of uh, word of mouth uh, uh, operation, so you create your reputation, and then based on the in the in the industry where you're working on, uh, they you have like a, an other people like a referring your services. Here in Canada, in the North American market, it's more uh, it's not a personal relationship like Raquel says. You you need to build more your reputation. You need to build more about the content of your product. So uh, it took around one year for us to understand how the best way to to get into the market, right? And 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 not just the, the not just how to get the strategy, but also how to understand the ecosystem because there's a process that you have to follow it. Unfortunately, in in my personal experience, I never did that in in, in Mexico. So right now we have to uh, do the journey, the customer journey. We have to identify the ID personas and the. In, in for our uh, potential um, customer, we we have we have to identify who are our innovators, who are our early adapters, and then we need to create a meshes or content for that particular um, uh, market. So that's probably in my case because I I am IT, uh, my back and background is in the, uh, from IT. It was one of my challenging parts in the process, so I have to learn a lot. Fortunately. Um, uh, uh, the the best way to uh, the the best um, thing to stay here is that there's a lot of people that are willing to help you in many different aspects. So you can be, you can find people to help you to understand the marketing strategy, how to build the relationship with the with your customers, how to build your digital marketing. So this is I think um, something that the, the one of the good things that I really like to stay here in Canada. So I found a lot of people who are really helping me to move faster, to understand. But this is true as, a, as an entrepreneur, as a CEO, you have to be open to listen all these advices and suggestions in order to improve yourself. I'm not sure why it's not um, showing right now the video, but um, if you can see me, uh, Victor Lipsio and okay. Raquel. Yeah, yes. we're fine. You can yeah, I can see you. Perfect. For some reason, in the in the main in the main chat, we're not gonna be. Uh, I'm not showing my screen, uh, so we're gonna continue. We'll see if. Uh, oh, now we're good. Okay, perfect. And that's the beauty of it, right? Like we know that in 2020, mm -hmm. everyone's yeah, right now an expert on how to uh, speak to the camera, how to look. You know, they say even that the mirror or the screen many people I know so many people that um, or who didn't like on camera so 
it's it's just part of the journey. So we have a couple more questions as well from from the air audience. And remember, the questions you can make them through the stage on the right panel, or you can hashtag Latam Startups in any of the social media platforms. Again, hashtag Latam Startups for all the questions, or you can do them in the stage chat. So now we have um, other picture, uh, other country over here, other uh, question. So, and this one goes for um, Lipsio. So why Canada, if knowing that the backpacks can go uh, anywhere in the world? Uh, great question, Guillermo. Actually, uh, we were thinking about uh, multiplying our channel distribution back in the day in Brazil. And moving to another country would be a, a, an ideal solution. In 2018, we traveled to Canada to explore and to understand this this country and this economy. And by the time we landed here, uh, we saw that every single person was wearing a backpack. So it was super funny to see uh, even girls in Brazil. In Brazil, most of most of women uh, prefer to wear handbags than than backpacks. Mm -hmm. But here, the thing is different. Girls and guys, they all use backpacks. And then we felt encouraged to understand that we have, one, a market that was inclined to, to wear backpacks. Two, a market that was a, a very tough market uh, uh, because the Canadian, the Canadian people are very cash conscious. So they are really aware of where they're putting uh, their money on. So if we can break in the Canadian market, that'll be a great uh, a way to succeed in North America as a whole. And, and the Third, and the most important thing, is Canada gives the whole support and the full support for a company to be, for an international company to be established here. Uh, from, mm -hmm. uh, uh, from incorporating the company up into accessing grants and loans and all that, Canada is, is a very uh, uh, fertile ground. It's a great place to establish and to start testing and implementing and pivoting and growing your company. And since then, we've been very happy with the results so far. And probably we'll never be able to achieve the same results if we were starting uh, uh, in, another in another country other than Canada. Was there any additional uh, like situation that came for you, Lipsio, or the company in general to choose Canada over any other uh, country? Uh, there was there was uh, uh, Canadians travel a lot, so mm -hmm. it's part of their culture travel uh, uh, overseas, outside the country, inside the country. So it's 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 people that travel every single long weekend. Uh, so mm -hmm. as part of that habit, we felt that there were a connection between that those traveling habits with our products, uh, being also handcrafted and, and ethically produced. Bid Nickinson's backpacks also would resonate with this spirit of the Canadian people, people that care about each other, that care about what's fair, what's uh, ecological, and what's sustainable in the world. So coming from uh, a company that has the same background, that uh, uh, advertises and also implements uh, uh, ethical values, we thought that Canada shared the same values uh, with us. So we, uh, at the end of the day, it was a no-brainer to choose Canada as the second country to expand uh, after Brazil. That's awesome. I, it's, it's, it's definitely, and, and if, I, if I may add, definitely that um, a traveling culture, it's very noticeable when you go to other countries because the Canadians overall travel, but they're not necessary as, uh, like prominent or showing uh, other than the little flag on their backpacks or and whatever like what they have and 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 they are very nature conscious so I'm glad that uh, those values got connected with uh, with uh, with your company and and the values of, of, of Canadians overall I have another question and this yeah. one goes for Raquel so Raquel they're asking on the chat, about the validation process. So um, I wanna, I, when you are validating either strategies or, or, or pivots, you know that as a, as a, as a, as a, 
founder or as a co-founder or as an entrepreneur, the validation process needs a lot of interaction with the new the mark the mar the market that you're targeting. So tell us a little bit about the interactions on how to validate. I know that, for example, it could be more electronically here than uh, uh, in Latin America, or do you find it the same? At the validation, you must share your product and your solution all the time to listen to the other people, um, possible clients, uh, mentors, uh, to, to ask for, for guidance and advice. So you, you, has to, you have to be humble to rebuild sometimes uh, not only the strategy, but uh, adapt your solution for the new market. And, uh, and we are also all the time learning with other companies uh, and with our partners here. So I am all the time talking, talking to other people, uh, talking to other companies that are in the healthcare uh, market, um, other companies that share the same values and, and kind of the same systems that we have. Uh, this is really important to receive feedbacks and organize all the strategy to go to the market. Um, so the, the first suggestion I give is to listen to the other ones and be humble to understand that sometimes you have to adapt and reorganize your strategy and sometimes adapt your solution. Uh, and we are always learning. It's not, it's not a, a step that you start and you do like in three months and then you are ready. You are always learning with your customers, with your clients, with the market and with mentors. So at Latam, for example, we receive guidance and we have mentorship with great uh, people that are always giving us suggestions to, to make our solution better and to adapt for the Canadian market. Thanks. Have you, ha have you uh, had a chance to do some validation, Victor? in Canada and what, what are the challenges for you? Oh, sure. Yes, we have to talk a lot with people. Uh, we have to do a lot of interviews with um, international students, with the customers, with potential clients. And some of the things that we learn is that we can use the same, uh, the same process in Latin America. So what happened today is that all the things that we learn here about marketing, about the strategy, about sales, we are um, using the same idea in Latin America. And, 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 and the good thing is it's, it's, it's helping us. It's really helping us to understand because like uh, Raquel mentioned, we, um, it's important to listen the the customer, right? Most of the time you want to build something beautiful. You want to build something perfect, but if no one is going to use it, if no one is going to buy it, there's no way mm -hmm. to do it, right? So first of all, you need to understand you need to listen. You need to do a lot of interviews. I know that sometimes, especially for Latins, it's kind of difficult to, to, to do that. Like, a, oh, I don't know. You know, I want to do it. I just like I want to start building something and see if it works. But then you realize that you can spend two years of your life creating something that's not going to work. But if you start creating something and, and then you're pivoting, you're uh, asking questions, doing some testing with the, the potential uh, customers. First of all, you will validate your assumptions. You will validate the market, but also you're going to create a reputation because other people will see what you're doing. And then this is the, the second part of the process. You can tell investors, uh, mentors, or any any accelerator program, what, what, what are you doing in order to grow uh, your company successfully? Amazing. Thank you very much. And I think that just to uh, wrap up, Lipsia, what, uh, what has been the, the validation process for you in Canada? Uh, uh, validation process, Guillermo, is, is, an, is an ongoing practice. So, and my, my advice to everyone that is establishing a business, especially in another country, don't be afraid to test. Uh, don't be afraid to spend money testing either uh, uh, doing some research or, or investing in digital marketing in order to get the first feedback from, from your clients if you're trying to sell uh, uh, B2C or if it's B2B, reach out to as many uh, customers as you can in order to really test. Uh, uh, you never know 
uh, as much about your product as you think you know. So by the time you start listening to people, uh, they will also help you build a better product. So don't be afraid to test. Test is key, especially uh, in a new country, in a new market, uh, when you might think you know about what's going on here, but actually you don't. So by the time you go out there, uh, go uh, uh, put your face uh, uh, in the streets and start uh, talking and, and showing your brand, showing your product, then you're going to start seeing results and feedback that can be implemented and maybe even change your product. So test, test, test. I, I, I like that part. I like how you ended up like you think you know, but you don't. <laughs> yeah. No, never. It's, defini it's never. definitely one of uh, the, the, the biggest dilemmas because it, it I don't think it has – anything to do with the fact that it's a different culture. But at the end of the day, even in this culture, not even the people know what they want, right? In the sense of like you're giving a solution of a problem, but you don't even know if the users are going to be needing that or not. My I think thing. More, you, you, you have to be able to listen. You, you have to be open to listen. Uh, as an example, in my company in Brazil, we sell uh, more than 60% of the, our bags are sold to men. Uh, by the time we got here, 80% of our sales are going to women. Same product, same portfolio, wow. but the demographic is completely different. We never could uh, uh, expect that. Guys buying in Brazil, uh, girls buying in, in Canada, it makes no sense. And it starts to make sense once you start to, to realize what's going on, but you never you're never able to understand that in advance. So testing is it's very it's very important. Amazing. Well, thank you very much, everyone. Before I let you go, I just wanted to do a couple of reminders for the uh, people watching that you can have any questions at Latam hashtag Latam Startups in any of the social media. And also, if you have some questions about uh, how to email Canada, so you can go on the left, there's an like option of the virtual booth, the expo, uh, you'll see an icon of uh, uh, um, a little kiosk. So if you go there, you're going to be able to have a conversation with an immigration expert from Bright Immigration. So I know that there were a lot questions as well related to the laws, to the programs, to everything that the itself helps to uh, for for new uh, companies like you guys uh, in, 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 in the answers are going to be there. So thank you, Victor Salinas, the CEO of IonTech, Lipsio Carvalho, CEO of Bitbank and Sons, and Raquel Bochat, co-founder of Atimos. Thank you very much guys for um, joining us. It was a very interesting conversation.